Hey guys, we're back again, finally. Um, yeah, Sears had to go on holiday, so sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's me. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, well, to be fair, you have got two kids, so you know, you're yeah. allowed to go on holiday every now and then. Um, so yeah, but anyway, we're back, and as promised, we are going to start with um, how to get the caller ID uh, sent with the call when we make an outbound call from our asterisk system. Um, so, Matthias, what do we need for that, and how do we do it? First of all, what was the problem? <laughs> yeah, okay. We, we didn't set... Uh, uh, caller ID for our outbound call. Mm -hmm. uh, what happened was that depends on the provider, but in our case, it just was an anonymous call. Then yeah. mm -hmm. you could not see uh, a private. It was a private call, so yeah. you could not see the number of the callee. Um, maybe that's what you want. Then could you're be. done. Yeah. <laughs> um, in some other cases, um, it really depends on the provider. Yeah. Uh, they will not be sent no number so it won't be anonymous but maybe your first number if mm -hmm. you have um, more than one numbers a block of numbers then maybe it would send the first number mm -hmm. or just use some number out of your range and it could also be for example uh, if you've got a team and you want to just send the team extension number mm -hmm. as opposed to the individual extension number for your team members mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of companies do that so mm -hmm. that could be one way uh, of what this is useful for mm -hmm. So true, and in short, you can say you don't know what happens if you don't set the caller ID yeah. by yourself, then mm -hmm. you just, something happens. Potluck. Yeah, Some, okay. something. So uh, best what, the provider, what the provider thinks that's good for you. So best practice yeah. is to set it then? Yeah, that's okay. true. So that's <laughs> why we will do that. <laughs> Take it away then. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, so first of all, the first problem is um, setting the caller ID is relatively easy. You mm -hmm. go to the extensions conf, the variable name is caller ID num. Funny enough. So, <laughs> yeah. So just set it to some value. But which value? Mm -hmm. You could use just the local part of your number. So um, the um, the first part of your number. Okay. So mm -hmm. which is the your number? Or you can use your number um, and in front the area code, mm -hmm. in front the country code. Maybe with the plus sign, yep. maybe with zero, zero. Could you be. just don't know what mm -hmm. your provider um, wants mm -hmm. you to set for the call ID. Right. You don't know. And in most cases, they just accept one format of call ID. Uh -huh. um, so you could just try it out because there are not so many possibilities. Mm -hmm. your, your number, only your number, mm -hmm. then your number with uh, the area code, your number with the country code, with a plus sign, without anything, or with zero, zero in front. But that could be a little bit of trial and error. Yes. So is there a quicker way? Yes. Perfect. <laughs> you can just go to the asterisk, uh, mm -hmm. start the SIP debug, mm -hmm. and make an inbound call, and then you see what your provider transfers, because cool. there is a from in the two. Mm -hmm. From will be your mobile, yep. and two will be the number you dial, mm -hmm. and we can see the format the provider uses then. Okay. And maybe that's what we should set if we do an outbound call. So should we try it then? Give it a try. Right then. Okay. So first of all, we are back um, on the SSH console and we go to the asterisk CLI. Um, there we enable SIP debug. We did that before. SIP set debug for our P and we called it provider. Not very creative, but easy. It was probably a Monday morning when we made that video. Yes, yes. <laughs> and here um, you can see, um, as I mentioned earlier, the ping packets um, to keep the NAT mm -hmm. open. So that's everything we see. And um, now, James, you could do an inbound call. Right here then. Okay, we are waiting for the inbound call. There it is. You can hang up, please, again. Then I stop the debug. Then I can scroll up. And then we can have a look at the invite, the first invite. There it is. There it is. And here you can see it's a call from James' mobile phone, which is a German mobile phone, so plus four nine. Mm -hmm. And you can see he called our number, which we have registered at our provider. And you can see he uses plus one and then area code and 
Yeah, the number. So he's got plus one for US, USA, six yeah. four six for New York, and then the actual number itself. Yeah. So maybe this is the format he will uh, also accept for upbound calls. You just try it. How to do that? We go to the extensions conf. Here we have our simple outbound configuration where we just say dial uh, to the provider and dial the number. We uh, covered that already in other tutorials, how we did this, what's important. And now we do a new first line which is set, then the variable. Caller ID num that's wrong, I think the syntax is like this. I'm not sure. That looks good. Yeah, that looks good because it's uh, colored now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and oops, I just copied the number. It did not work. So again, copy. And paste like this. So I set the caller ID number to that number. So what we now expect is if I do an outbound call, then you should not see on your mobile uh, anonymous no. number, but mm -hmm. yeah. the number is set here. So there's a good reason for using the shortcut with N. Yeah, <laughs> true. <laughs> now we say dial plan reload and we say zip set debug off. Now we do the outbound call. I just copy the number from my notepad. The zero is the zero we need to do an outbound call because mm -hmm. we configured it like that. Uh, that then um, the country code, the area code, and your local yeah. number. Give it a try. James Mobile. Now you can see. We've got the proper everything. It's New York everything. Yeah? Yeah. Do you want to hang up now? No. Okay. <laughs> just let it ring then. Yeah. <laughs> no, just hang up, please. So you can see. Um, Hello, here is the mobile box on. And here is your mobile. I cancel that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no mobile. Uh, no mobile voice mailboxes. Um, that's what we did now. Mm -hmm. So um, we made a call. We were able to set the caller ID number. Yep. And we figured out how the format should be. So you can use this in many scenarios. Mm -hmm. um, now we have only one number because we only registered one number at the provider. Yep. But in your situation, it could be that you set different numbers because you have many numbers mm -hmm. registered to that provider yeah. and you can just uh, change them okay. uh, like this. Or um, maybe you enable the feature which is called clip no screening mm -hmm. and then the provider allows you to set any number you want to. Uh -huh. um, that's dangerous somehow, but it's very useful okay. because think about you want to do um, uh, call redirection. Mm -hmm. You are calling our PBX system yep. from your mobile and then I do a redirection to my cell phone. Mm -hmm. Then I don't want to see the number of my company but your mobile yeah, number. Exactly. Because I want maybe maybe I want to call back. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> not, not sure. Oh. <laughs> For sure I want to call oh, thank back. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, and then this is handy. But if I do it now here and just try to set any number, mm -hmm. then maybe it fails and it just makes um, yeah, screening mm -hmm. and then it just sets a number out of my range or anonymous call again, mm -hmm. something like this. Yeah. So you can just test it, set any caller ID number. Yep. If it works, click no screening is 
enabled. Mm -hmm. um, if not, then it's disabled and you can ask your provider. Right. And there are some other things which can happen. Um, sometimes it does not work setting the caller ID because you have to manipulate the zip headers somewhere else. Okay. Um, to set caller IDs because there are different methods, mm -hmm. but this is the most common. And as right. you see, we just choose one provider and it yeah. works out of the yeah. box. So normally this is what you what you want. Perfect. Cool. Is there anything else on caller ID? No. That was pretty quick and painless. Yeah, no, it's not. Yes, the tutorial is quick and painless, but um, caller IDs are not because sometimes yes. it takes a long time to figure out the format or something does not work or is um, clip no screening enabled or not. Or mm -hmm. I want to set it in this situation, that number, how can I do this in the dial plan? And you have to do m many matches to figure out uh, which. I can imagine it does uh, get quite complicated. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Rapidly complicated. <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> right then. Um, so that's it on Cooler ID, and I think pretty much on the SIP provider as well. Have we got anything I more? think so. We made an inbound call. We made an outbound call. That's we pretty much what you want for a SIP provider to do uh, yes. in most cases. Okay. You can, there are there are more things. Um, but they're the basics. This, these are the basics. Uh, more things like uh, the codec to choose. Some mm -hmm. providers are providing HD codecs already. Mm -hmm. yep. So you could change it um, if you like to, but this is done in the SIP configuration. Yep. Or you have to uh, configure um, T38 for your fax machines. Mm -hmm. That's really crazy um, and complicated. Yep. In most cases, you just don't need it. I remember when we were doing the provider template for MobyDick for Flowroot. Mm -hmm. That was one of the criteria. Yeah. And the development team were very happy about it. Yeah. <laughs> it works. It works, but they were very... <laughs> it works, but um, so there are some other topics about providers. Right. But um, these are the basic, and I hope uh, it helps that you can find out how your particular provider works and Perfect. You can integrate it. Good. So, what are we going to move on to next, ne next time? Any idea? I think there were a lot of requests about NAT in detail. This is true. There were yeah. lots of requests about NAT. Mm -hmm. So that's probably maybe we do something like that. This. May be the next good logical step, particularly as we when we be doing the debugging, we've looked at yes. it. Perfect. So there you have it, right from Matthias's the horse's <laughs> mouth. We're going to do <laughs> NAT tables next. All right. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Until then, bye. Yeah.